This is Sermon Snippets with Max Taylor. Our goal is to explain the Bible and show how its truths apply to everyday life. I don't know if your Bible is this way, but mine, anytime I I try to flip to the book of James, it just automatically opens up at the first page of James. And maybe throughout this study, when we get to the end of it, maybe your Bible will be just, it'll naturally open to the book of James. That would be a wonderful thing if you spend that much time studying this book and what God has to say through the pastor of Jerusalem at the time. So today we're looking at James chapter 1, and we're going to pick up where we left off last time. And we're going to read from verse 6 uh, down to verse 11. Um, hopefully we'll get that far today, but we're just going to start out by reading a few verses, starting in chapter 1, verse 6. The Bible says, But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. Right at the beginning here, we're introduced to what I call the sub-theme of the book. It's mentioned in verses 6 through 8, and it's really the idea that our security is in Christ. Now, I don't know about you, but to me it seems like insecurity is an epidemic in our world today. People look to others for validation and affirmation. They make decisions based on what everyone else is doing. We are really a wavering society. And this passage says that the problem of wavering is rooted in a lack of faith. It says that right in verse 6, but let him ask in faith. Now, what what is it talking about? It's talking about asking for wisdom. That was mentioned in verse 5. And specifically, verses 3 through 5, during a trial when you're asking God, for wisdom and, and you're, you're being grown in the area of patience. God promises that he will give you wisdom and he will not mock you or ridicule you for asking, but you have to ask in faith, nothing wavering. And the picture here is of a statue. So you can picture whatever marble or chiseled statue that that comes to mind maybe it's michelangelo's david or moses or some other sculpture or i i always use the example of the lincoln memorial with my campers over the summer and take that that idea of being unstable and if we apply that to this picture of the statue so whatever statue you're thinking of the, the lincoln memorial picture it in really bad condition So picture the statue just shattered and filled with holes and cracks. Maybe someone like took a sledgehammer to it and it's leaning over about to crumble. This is what we look like when we lack faith in God. We are wavering like a wave, he says, driven about and tossed. We're empty and unstable. This is insecurity. That is not how God wants us to live, but rather God wants us to be a solid statue, resolute, complete, consistent throughout, not missing any chunks or uh, leaning over, but stable, firmly established in him. But we have to have faith. Otherwise, we're going to be insecure. Our, Our security comes from our faith in God. And so as we look throughout the book, this is not the only place where this comes up. It comes up all throughout the book. In chapter 2, verse 4, he says, are you not then partial? Um, Chapter 1, verse 24, he says, the person that goes his way and straightway forgets what manner of man he was. He's an unstable person. Um, Chapter 2, verses 17 and verse 20, they both talk about how faith without works is dead. It's empty. It's worthless. Chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. This is a problem that James points out all throughout the book. And it's so important to him that he brings it up multiple times. And that's why I think it is the sub-theme for the book. 
Now, I am going to wait until the very end of this study to tell you what I think the theme of the entire book is. Traditionally, people who study the book of James, they say it's very difficult to outline, which it is because it's almost like the the structure of the book of Proverbs where there's a lot of seemingly isolated or random ideas strung together throughout. But there is a good way to outline the book. And there are clear divisions throughout. And we're going to look at those as we study the book. But I'm going to save what I believe the theme or the takeaway of the entire book is until the end. And then I'll share with you what I think uh, we should come away from the book of James with. And I'll also, I'll share with you some of the ideas of the campers that I had this past summer. Because after spending a whole week studying the book, they would tell me what they thought the theme of the whole book is. And I wrote some of those down. So I'll share some of those with you when we get to the very end of this book. And I want you to be thinking. I want you to think about what you believe the theme for this entire book is. And if you want to share what you think at any point throughout this study, you can mention it in the comments. Or especially that last time that we look at look at this book and we, we close it out. I'd love to read your comment and to hear what you think the theme of this book is. Verses 9 and 10 picks up where we were discussing last time that all of life is a trial. Let's look at it. He says, let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. So in other words, if you're humble, then rejoice. Respond right when God lifts you up, when he exalts you, because it's God that does that. In verse 10, but the rich in that he is made low. So if God tests your faith by blessing you, then rejoice. Or if God tests your faith by removing things from you. Rejoice that the answer is still the same. He says, because as the flower of grass, he shall pass away. So remember that your security is not found in your possessions or in your position, but it's in Christ. Verse 11, for the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass and the flower thereof falleth and the grass of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. We are complete only in Christ. And this is what I've been thinking about a lot lately. This is what I want to leave you with to meditate on throughout today and and the rest of this week. Now, I'm going to read a couple uh, scripture passages that just kind of come to mind. Um, Romans 11, verse 36, it says, For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. 2 Corinthians 3, 5 says, Our sufficiency is of God. Philippians 1.21, Paul writes, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Colossians 2.10, And ye are complete in him, which is Christ, who is the head of all principality and power. 1 Timothy 6.6 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. All over scripture, we see this theme that we are complete in Christ. He makes us complete. And and we're instructed to live consistently with that, to believe that we are complete with Christ. Because here's the thing, we are complete in him. If you're saved, you are objectively complete with him. So listen, Christ really is enough. He's all you need. You have Christ and you have his word. That's all you need. Possessions, riches, those are going to pass away. In the, at the end of uh, the book of Second Peter, in chapter 3, he gives us this perspective. He says, all these things are going to pass away. So you need to have a limited, a minimalist perspective. You need to have your eyes set on the target, which is Christ coming back. And because of that, you should be trying to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Your relationship with God is all you need. It is enough. But my question is, is that really enough for you? Or are you looking to something else to be made complete? We're going to pick up with temptation next time. And this really is the answer to temptation. It's the truth that Christ really is enough. I hope he's enough for you.